Hey guys, welcome back to The Local Flavor. As always, I'm your host, Mark Roberts, and today you're in for a very special treat. I'm in beautiful Sumter, South Carolina at the prestigious Hamptons Restaurant, where we're gonna interview the general manager, William, and find out what makes this place so unique. And we'll go behind the scenes with the chef, Raphael, to see one of his special dishes done up perfectly, and especially for me. If you guys don't wanna go anywhere, it's only right here on FTC Now, only on The Local Flavor. I think of Hamptons as a upscale casual restaurant. Uh, we took the white tablecloths out uh, about a year and a half ago uh, to make it more warm and friendly. And we had beautiful wood, as you can see around us, that we really wanted to showcase. And it's, and it's really an American restaurant with a very strong Italian accent. Uh, our chef is from Milan. Um, as far as what it's known for, great food, great times. It's a fun place. Um, it's the kind of place that you can come in and feel comfortable if you want to dress up for a special occasion but you don't have to feel awkward if you decide you want to come in in jeans and a shirt as well. well uh, we do require a shirt and shoes, but that's about the only limitations we have. Uh, Hampton started as an idea between Greg and Daniel Thompson, his wife. Uh, they're business leaders in the Sumter area, uh, and they had had a dream of owning a fine dining restaurant. Uh, about four years ago, they got together with a chef who I had also worked with and hooked up the idea of building Hamptons and building a fine dining restaurant here in Sumter, South Carolina. Uh, they got the restaurant underway, got it started, started and began to realize that dream. Uh, about a year and a half into the project, the original chef decided it was time for him to move on and Greg contacted me again and said, asked if I would be willing to come down and relocate to help run the restaurant and free them up to do other projects as well as bring in a new chef. Um, I had been opening restaurants around the country during that time period and I agreed. So we came down here and we brought the new chef from the little Washington, Rafael Del Urza. Uh, he came about the same time I did and, and uh, all, with all the restaurants I had been opening, Rafael was the one chef that I had always said when I was going to do my last restaurant, it was going to be my restaurant, he was the one that I wanted to work with. So uh, after some lengthy negotiation, we convinced him to come down and uh, join us here at Hamptons. Uh, since that time, the restaurant has been growing by leaps and bounds. We just most recently were named one of the top 100 restaurants in the United States on the opentable.com polls. Um, and we've been garnering more and more recognition. Uh, Rafael Adalert, I met him right about 2000. Um, he had just come back from Milan, Italy, where he's from. Uh, and he had been training in several Michelin restaurants over there. We were working together at the Inn at Little Washington and he started on the line and very rapidly advanced to the title of executive sous chef. Uh, within 12 months, he was the primary menu designer uh, of the Inn at Little Washington, very highly regarded five-star, five-diamond restaurant. Uh, working with Raphael over a course of about seven years, I watched him again and again create dishes that I had never seen anywhere before. I've been working in the business for over 25 years in top restaurants in Miami, New York, LA, DC, and Rafael continued to innovate on a level that I had never seen anywhere else. But he also had some common sense approach to what he did. Um, he never ventured out into these kind of crazy molecular gastronomy dishes. He never wanted to make things that were so expensive they were unaffordable. And that's what I thought was really the magic of Raphael, was that he was able to work with ingredients that's, that were accessible to most people, but turn them into things that were just absolutely unbelievably tasting. Try a bite and you'll see. Well, uh, I start from uh, when I was little, um, definitely from my, uh, my family. Uh, my grandmother, when I, we used to go in, uh, in this little house on top of the mountain uh, in Parma, we used to um, go pick all the uh, berries, fruit, and uh, mushroom. So we were like uh, foraging around, you know, uh, the, in the woods. And so when we got back home, uh, my grandmother, she, uh, she would show me, you know, how to prepare all this, you know, uh, beautiful ingredient. And uh, so from, from there, and then my, my father loved to make uh, pasta. So we used to make uh, uh, ravioli, uh, tagliatelle, uh, pretty much everything made with uh, fresh, fresh pasta. 
and that was the beginning. And then uh, me, uh, he uh, he used to take me in this um, festival for like a fundraiser. So they used to have uh, this kitchen. Uh, so we were doing a lasagna, um, cannelloni, all this you know Italian uh, you know um, recipe. So after that, I pretty much realized that that was uh, the direction I want to go in my, in my life, and uh, you know I, I can totally see the interest was growing in, in me. And uh, so, I by age uh, uh, 16, I was uh, I, w I went to culinary school. I did uh, two years of that, and after that, I uh, started doing a couple seasons. I was going, uh, you know, my, my head was more like to have fun in that time. So I was doing. Uh, uh, season uh, a little bit in, uh, in in the mountain, a little bit uh, in in Milan in the city. So I was traveling a lot. By age 21, uh, you know, after I was done with the military, I uh, decided to come to the United States. My friend, uh, he had an incredible experience in uh, in New York, working uh, for some of the best restaurants in New York. So he was telling me about it. I got so um, fascinated about. Um, you know the, the the cuisine in in the state, and uh, so I I came in uh, in Baltimore. That was my uh, first restaurant. It was an Italian restaurant, and uh, after a two and a half year, you know we you know I got married, and uh, we um, we decided to to move in uh, in the countryside, and we found a beautiful you know restaurant. It's a five star five diamond in Virginia. So I started working uh, at um, the Inner Little Washington, and it's uh, one of the best restaurants in uh, in the United States and uh, one in the world. So I was there uh, for 11 years, and I became, uh, you know, a executive sous chef. And after that, I felt I need uh, something uh, I want to do is I want to put my name out and uh, Hampton. I saw Hampton, and when I saw, you know, Hampton, it was definitely, you know, the place I want to be. Well, the menu actually changes on a daily basis, so it's hard to pick a signature. Uh, we always make sure that we have a couple of great steaks on the menu. We always make sure we have a couple of great pastas and great salads. So those areas of the menu are always represented. But Raphael is a creative individual, and he really changes the menu up on a nearly continuous basis. The menu goes through four major shifts during the course of a year, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Uh, we're about to go into our spring menu. You know, once we make those shifts, they tend to be fairly radical changes with overall designs of the menu changing you know, almost in its entirety. Then throughout that period, that season, we will change the menu look subtly each and every day. Hey, it may be an appetizer here, it may be an ingredient on a dish there, here, but there's always something new here. So it's very hard to peg a signature dish per se. Hey, he certainly has plenty of dishes that people rave about. Uh, if you've ever tasted any of his ravioli, you'll know exactly what I mean. Hey, but uh, we really like to keep it fresh and exciting for people. The great thing about Raphael is he's such a friendly chef that if you've had something here before and you really enjoyed it, if you let us know at a time, uh, we will always special order whatever we need to make that dish. So if you enjoy the lobster ravioli on one visit and, and you're planning on coming back and we don't have the lobster ravioli, if it's possible, we will be happy to order the lobster and he's more than happy to prepare those dishes for you. Being in Sumter, I, I know I was uh, trepidatious at first, but once we got here and we realized, one, the access of ingredients that we had it was just unmatched anywhere else. Uh, we have this amazing coastal area just to the east of us, uh, and just to the west, west of us we have this huge bread basket. We're also kind of right in the center of the state. We're sandwiched right between I-95 and I-85. We have Columbia to the west, uh, Florence to the north, Orangeburg to the south, uh, and little by little people have started drawing in from the outer areas. Um, so if you come here on the weekend, we have a stretch of limos out there. Uh, you certainly don't need a limo to get here, but we certainly see a few of them coming in more and more often now. Uh, uh, we're a short drive. We're within an hour of just about everybody in South Carolina. And it's very hard to beat the quality of the food. Hampton's uh, original mission was to kind of be something for everybody. Um, at that time, Sumter really didn't have very many options. One for fine dining, 
two for a high quality bakery, a, and three for a fresh market. So Hamptons was sort of combined into a, a threefold process. Uh, on to my left, uh, you see there is an actual bakery in here. We have a full scale bakery, we bake our own breads, we make cakes, pies, pastries, desserts, desserts and uh, they're available both for use in the dining room and the restaurant, but we also sell those to go. Immediately behind me we have the wine area. Uh, we have a full scale wine shop in addition to the wine list, which has also garnered awards from the Wine Spectator. Uh, the idea was that we have both retail and restaurant pricing, so people who wanted a special bottle of wine and couldn't find them somewhere else in Sumter have a great place to come in. Uh, I spent most of my career working as a sommelier, so you have the advantage of somebody who can, can help guide you through the different selections that we have. And then the last section that we have would be the bar and the kitchen. Um, the bar is exactly what you see, it's a bar. All right, and it's a beautiful bar. We have a great bartender who does a fantastic job making handcrafted cocktails. And the kitchen was specifically designed to be out in front where people could see it. We wanted everything to be transparent at Hamptons. We like the idea of guests being able to sit down uh, right at that chef's bar and watch them prepare the meal. Uh, there's nothing like that experience to see what goes behind uh, the cooking and everything that's involved in it. So if you come in here and sit down on Friday night, uh, you can have a seat right there and watch the show. We have two outside venues. We have what we call the Parisian Cafe, which is a series of six tables right in front of the restaurant on the street. They're small round tables where guests can enjoy cocktails. And then we have the alleyway. It seats about 60 people. We have live entertainment out there on Friday nights when the weather's nice, uh, which this winter has been <laughs> a great winter for it. All right, and a big roaring fireplace out there as well. The alleyway menu, uh, you can have the entire restaurant menu out there but we also run a more casual menu for guests who are in the mood for lighter items, things like burgers, pizzas, pasta, uh, and dishes like that that don't necessarily want the formality of the menus that we serve inside the restaurant, but still want to enjoy the ambiance and experience of Hamptons. Lunch for most people that are dining with us is a business affair. So we are located directly across the street from the hospital and the Thompson Corporate Board is also across the street, as well as many other merchants and businesses downtown. So we try to keep lunch fast and good. Um, essentially, a, the lunch is designed to be done and uh, served in about 15 minutes. And so most people are coming in, they have about an hour to eat. And we figure it takes them about 10 minutes to get here, 10 to get back to the office, another 10 to socialize, and 10 minutes for us to make the food, which gives them about 15 minutes to enjoy the meal. So we try to get the meal out as quickly as possible. We try to retain the quality that you see in the dinner menu as well. Uh, as a result, when you look at our lunch menu, you'll see a lot of old favorites and standby combinations, such as soup and salad, sandwiches, uh, pastas, and things like that. Uh, but you'll also see a little bit more innovative presentations than you're likely to see in other venues in Sumter. Dinner is definitely where I believe the restaurant really shines. Um, it's the time that we have a little bit more time to spend working with the dishes uh, and the chef has a little bit more time to get involved with the actual presentations. So the dinner menu is really the more elaborate presentations. We did try to keep the entrees limited to about $25 because we wanted to be an atmosphere where or everybody could enjoy it at least once or twice a year. Even if it's only for a special occasion, we want it to be accessible to the people of Sumter. Uh, as a result, you'll see that reflected in the menu. You know, very, very high quality ingredients. We actually have a two acre garden where we grow a lot of the produce for the restaurant when the weather's permitting. And we source as much of it as we can locally. And we try to bring that into the restaurant and prepare it in new and innovative ways that just aren't seen in other venues. Um, we're located at 4 West Hampton Avenue and our hours are, are Tuesday through Friday for lunch from 11.30 to 2.30, Wednesday through Saturday from, for dinner from 5.30 till well, 10 o'clock. We accept reservations up until 9.30 and the kitchen stays open until 10. And uh, the easiest way to get information about us is to go to the internet, we have www.hamptonsfoods.com. Both words are plural. Or if you just type in Hamptons and get past everything in that island in New York, you'll come up with us. Okay, and now we're gonna make a uh, towel fish with uh, yeah, our version of uh, vegetable succotash is with uh, basmati rice, steamed basmati rice. So first we start with um, the towel fish. Towel fish is local. We got from uh, this uh, guy uh, who um, pretty much he called me from the boat. He tell me what what he have on. He just got it, and uh, I tell him, you know. I want tail fish, I want grouper, uh, trigger fish. So this week we go with uh, tail fish and it's like a grouper 
but it's not, you know, the true grouper sometimes can be tough and dry. This is actually is a very juicy and, you know, uh, flaky. It's a good, clean fish. So I uh, salt and pepper each side. And then just a little bit oil in the pan. So when it starts to smoke, nice and hot. And not yet. I, um, I see her both sides until, you know, uh, golden brown. What I like to do, I like to, uh, when I cook, uh, use a little bit of white wine, butter, and uh, thyme leaves, give, you know, more flavor, what it just it give you, pretty much the fish is like a sponge, you, you wanna um, it just, you know, soak all the, uh, the wine flavor and the butter. And uh, so mean, meanwhile, we uh, were making the sauce. A little bit of oil again. Put on the side, I'm gonna put it right here. Cook. Meanwhile, I take uh, dice red and green pepper. Uh, clam shell mushroom, they call, uh, in, in Italy we call uh, curini, mean uh, little, uh, little nail. They look like, an, you see, you know, the nail with a, with a hammer. And this, cherry tomato. Italian sausage with just lightly, you know, poach. And then with slice. We sit we give it, a, you know, all the sugar start coming up from uh, from the vegetable, and then uh, a little bit salt and pepper. Again, a little bit sugar, like. A little bit more. You see? And then squash, uh, lightly already saute, giving that, that charcoal, you know, uh, flavor. Chop, uh, chop garlic and shallot. Then. The golden color to take a good amount of butter, thyme leaves. See all the got the flavor of the thyme, white wine. And then we put in oven for like a, a minute, two minutes, depending on the, the size. And then Glaze with the white wine. Can you smell already, you know, the flavor of the, the sausage, the fennel from the uh, Italian sausage. And then this is a uh, red pepper coulis. It's, a, it's like a stock made with uh, red pepper, carrots, onions, celery, herbs and spices. And then uh, when it's all, you know, cooked, we uh, put it in a blender. We puree, we make a, a, like a very thin sauce, as you can see. And then a uh, little bit tomato sauce to help to thick the sauce. And then green pea. Sometimes we use uh, fava or in the summer uh, field pea. A little bit. Chop uh, thyme, chop parsley, and again, I just add a little bit so salt, let it go, and then uh, pernod. Pernod is um, it's a fennel uh, liqueur. It gives a good perfume. Uh, it give, it's like sweet fennel uh, liqueur. It just give a help, help to 
to give the bursum your nose of you know uh, fennel and uh, spices. So when it start to boil, we just check the seasoning and uh, then uh, this is steam rice. We uh, what we do we uh, you know just water, salt, pepper, sugar, and uh, bay leaves. We uh, we cook and then we uh, we season and we put inside this container, keeping you know, a warm on top of the salamander. It just stay pretty much a whole day in you know, a warm. It doesn't overcook. It will, the steam will stay inside. Will keep all the time nice and fresh. So, so I'm gonna grab a plate. So this is the bowl. We're gonna put it right here. We will taste the seasoning. I will put a little bit of salt, pepper, a little bit of pernil. See, you get the fennel, the vegetable. A lot, you know, people, they, that are uh, guests that are coming here, they, uh, they just love to come here because uh, they said that we can, uh, it's not just a dish, but so your vegetable, they, they taste a lot of people, a lot of chef, they kind of forget, you know, about the vegetable. They, um, they kind of steam or saute, no, no seasoning. So what we, uh, we try to, in our dish, we like uh, melt all together, you know, all this flavor. So it's just, you know, come, you know, they're easy to eat, and the, you build the flavor. So that will be. The rice in the center. And then we make a basil oil to give you know, a little extra flavor and uh, like contrast of color inside the plate and said and then see see all the mm -hmm. the sugar start caramelized and again we take uh, all this flavor we let it soak back again in the in the fish And then we take a little bit of parsley, kind of pull. What it does is just, you know, it retain, uh, you know, the flavor, the good fresh flavor of the, bay, of the uh, parsley. And that's it. It's, that's one of our, our favorite dish we have on the menu now. All right, guys. These guys have put together their heads and made some of the greatest dishes out here. I'm with the chef, the general manager himself, and you were just telling me something interesting. You were telling me that you used to work for Wolfgang Puck, is that true? Uh, that's correct. It was with Wolfgang Puck, it was with Daniel Ballou, uh, a slew of other chefs, but uh, I didn't get to work with a real professional until I got to work with Raffaele Dollar. But... Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm lucky to be here and work with you. You know, you had a, a book of knowledge. It's uh, fun to, to work with you, so we're uh, I like the team to work here. It's amazing to be able to work with Wolfgang Puck and then say that working in Sumner, South Carolina, the Hamptons, with Chef Raphael is the highlight of his career. That's pretty amazing. And on a beautiful day like today, this is the best place you can possibly eat. What would you call this? What, what is this area that we're eating in now? Uh, we call this the alleyway. This is just our outdoor, outdoors venue. You know, uh, we serve lunch and dinner out here and on Friday nights we have live entertainment. It's incredible. They've got a huge fireplace back here. I'm telling you that this could probably keep the entire city warm if it needed to. And you've all seen what the chef was doing in the kitchen back there. This is magnificent. Tell us what we've got in front of us right now. Yep. So first we have uh, the uh, smoked salmon bruschetta with uh, arugula salad. And, and here we have uh, our version of uh, tile fish with uh, vegetable succotash. And 
So all these dishes, we uh, constantly change. Uh, we uh, we enjoy, you know, play with food. Again, we have a, a very, you know, incredible team. We are able to do that. They love to try. They love to uh, to change, uh, you know, new things. So. And you were telling me it's a lot like being an artist, right? Would you would you convey that same feeling? Definitely, you know, when you know an artist is always he need to constantly you know try uh, the dish you know they've done in the past uh, and maybe try to do better so the artist doesn't forget that technique. So we uh, you know one day we we got this beautiful fish from uh, Alaska. You know all the product we have is uh, uh, the best quality. You know you can. Uh, you know, you can have in the state. I try to get uh, fish from uh, Massachusetts. This is this style fish is local. Actually, a guy from a boat. He's calling me, and uh, after the what he he just got you know on his boat. He called me. He asked what I want. I have a tough fish. I have a trigger fish a grouper. So, so that's three days old. By the time you know we have uh, you know uh, in. Uh, in, in the restaurant and on your plate, so it's beyond fresh. It's absolutely amazing, and if art smelled this good, I promise you I'd be going to a lot more museums and a lot more art galleries. The amazing spices that he puts into this stuff, while you're watching him cook, you get this, uh, your sensories go nuts with this stuff. It's amazing, the smells that come from this dish, especially with all the different spices and different ingredients you use with this. Speaking of art, it's rare that you get to actually try and eat some art, but I think I'm gonna do that right now. You guys are welcome to join me. There probably won't be much after we're done. While I'm eating, tell them all where to go. Uh, we're, in we're in Sumter, South Carolina, at Hamptons Restaurant. We're located at 4 West Hampton Avenue. You know, our website is www.hamptonsfoods.com. Both words are plural. Oh, you can call us at 803-774-4400. And I'll tell you what, my, my hat's off to the chef right here. This guy is incredible. This is one of the best cuts I've ever eaten of any sort of fish. It's incredible, tastes great. Thank you so much, chef. As always, you guys stay tuned to the local flavor. We're gonna continue to bring you the best. While you're watching, we're gonna continue to eat. Stay tuned.